Okay, so this is going to be quite a complicated video. I'm going to give you a lot of information. So don't get uh, too confused. You might need to watch the video a couple of times. You should watch all the videos a couple of times. But we're going to do a lot of task one and cover a lot of new information that we haven't done before. The main reason for this video is what to do when this noun phrase system doesn't work. A lot of students have asked me. We've got noun phrase 1, 2, and 3, but sometimes that system doesn't work. If you remember, in this document over here, I said there are many examples which do not fit the pattern below, so we need to just start figuring out how to deal with that. This is a good example because in this one, the main verb is did. It's nothing. It's just, it's very difficult to work with did. You're not going to use did or doing as your, as your main nouns. So what do we do in this situation? The main thing that we're going to do is introduce noun phrase 4 and you will see that noun phrase 4 is very useful for this kind of thing. There are other things I will show you later but in this video we're really going to focus on noun phrase 4. Before we do that I want to do some revision of noun phrase 1, 2 and 3. And I also want to look at static and dynamic charts because we've done mainly dynamic charts but this chart here, this is static. You see it's only 2010, it's only one year, it's not over a period. They are comparing two categories and that's what static charts do, it's all about comparisons. The comparisons become a lot more important in static charts. So we will look at static and dynamic as well in this video. Let's start with some revision. If you remember this document, um, I said these are just the nouns that work very well with um, this noun phrase 1, 2, and 3 system. Consumption, consumption, noun phrase 1, noun phrase 2, noun phrase 3. If you don't know what this is, then you need to go back to the beginning and start uh, with my videos at number 1. So let's look at noun phrase 4 then. Noun phrase 4, it's, it's quite simple. It's just a number and then a countable noun or a number and then of and then an uncountable noun or if it's a percentage the number, the percentage of the, count, the noun. This can be countable or uncountable. So, for example, with our beef example, noun phrase 1 goes to noun phrase 2 goes to noun phrase 3. There's our number because beef is an uncountable noun. So we're going to have of, for example, 25 grams of beef and then was consumed. It's the same as this. And that's basically it. It's quite simple. There are a few details. Notice there's a grams over there. If it's uncountable, there will be some kind of units over there, just like there is a percentage over there. So this could be 25 cars, number countable noun. This could be 25 grams of beef, and this could be 25% of people, or you could say 25% of beef was consumed. Now, why didn't I introduce this at the beginning? Because the sentence structure is different, and I will show you that soon. The main thing I want you to notice here, this is the same as that, but it's not the same because it's the main verb. Here, this is just the noun phrase subject of the sentence. Here, this is the subject of the sentence. This is the main verb. So I'm not going to make it red. I'll make it a different color. It's the same as that, except it's not the same because here it's the main verb. Now, to make you just understand it better, I want to cover the sentences that we have done. For that, we, we need to start looking at dynamic charts and static charts, the different kinds of sentences. Just keep going and I'll, you'll see what I mean. Let's start with noun phrase one. What have we done? Beef consumption increased from X to Y in 2010. Right, this is our basic, the most basic sentence that we have. There is another thing that we can do. Instead of saying increased, we can say was or stood at. Now in phrase one, and stood at or was. We've done this before, and this is another very basic, very useful sentence that you can use. Beef consumption stood at X in 2010. This number gives you a nice re reference pronoun. Increased to Y in 2010. So these are the two most basic sentences that we've used and are very useful. You can use this for a lot of your task one. Now with, with noun phrase one, two or three, we can put any one of those in there. We can put noun phrase two in there. 
the rest of the sentence exactly the same. We can put noun phrase 3 in there, the rest of the sentence exactly the same. Same for this over here. So you must really learn these two sentence structures in detail. And that gives you a lot, a lot, a lot of sentences. You can actually do your whole task one. In some cases, you can do the whole task one just with these. And the examiner will not realize you're using the same structure because you're changing your noun phrases. Of course, we uh, put linking language in at the beginning sometimes. You don't have to put linking language in every time, just sometimes. So I'll put a question mark there just to say sometimes we put linking language in. And the same thing for this one. So that's where we are. Now the reason that I don't include noun phrase 4 in these is because the sentence structure is different. So actually I can just make this look like noun phrase Just make it look like that. Noun phrase 1, 2 or 3 can go in there. Noun phrase 1, 2 or 3 can go in there. Great. Let's call the number 1. So now the second one that I want to show you for dynamic charts is when we use noun phrase 4. Just like that. It's very simple. I just I teach it later because it's different. There is your main verb. In these, this is the main verb or that is the main verb. Here, this is the main verb. Then you could say same sort of thing. Again, we will put some linking language there sometimes. And just with these three structures, you can, you can get eight for your grammar. Maybe even nine. If you make zero mistakes, the examiner might even give you nine for your grammar. The key is learn them. Learn them well. Don't make any mistakes. If you try and learn too many sentence structures, you will make mistakes. Learn these three well, and then if you want, then learn another one. But make sure you've got these three under control, 100%. Great, but now we need to move on to static charts. Now, you should do some research, find out for yourself. I'll explain very quickly if you don't know what this means. Dynamic charts are like this one, where you have a, a range of time, a long period of time, and we're looking at how the things changed over time. Static charts are just when you're comparing two things. It's not about time. So, for example, this one we're going to look at today, you can see they only mention one year. So we're not looking at how things change over time. Rather, we are comparing male and female. So static charts are more about comparisons. You're not going to say increased, decreased with static charts. Big mistake if you say that. Dynamic charts are all, all about change over time, increased, decreased. So with static charts, again, we're going to use noun phrase 1, 2, or 3 as the subject of our sentence. Again, we're not going to say increased, decreased, but we are going to use stood at or was or were. And I'm just going to say men and women are the categories. Stood at X for men compared to we won't even say in 2010 because you don't want to say in 2010 after every sentence so this is our noun phrase one two three sentence that you're going to remember for static charts this you can also say as opposed to compared to as opposed to I'll use that in the task one later I'm going to give you another one here later, but I just want to show you for noun phrase 4. For noun phrase 4, it's the same as for dynamic charts. We're using the main verb over there. 25 grams of beef was consumed. So I'll just call it noun phrase 4 and main verb. 25 grams of beef, subject of your sentence, main verb was consumed. Main verb can be active or passive. But I'm going to just add a little bit more because remember static charts, we're all about comparison. So maybe there might be some thing there, some object, another noun or an adverb or something. Don't worry about that. 
and then you're going to compare it to the other category. I'll show you how to do that later. We need to practice a, li a little bit. So these are the first two that I want you to remember. I'm going to add two more. This is where I'm worried that I'm giving you too much information. But if you practice it a little bit, you will see that it's not too much. I'm going to give you one more here. And then later I'm going to show you that you can put two noun phrase fours in there. 25% of men and 28% of women. So it's the same one, it's just that you use two subjects in there. But for this one, let me just give you one more structure, which is this one. You're using noun phrase one, two, or three. This will be about the men. Of course, it's not always men and women. I'm just using men and women examples. And then we have a whole different verb here, was higher than for women at X and Y respectively. X is for men, Y is for women. So this is for men. Okay, and then that's all. So static charts, one, two, three. Dynamic charts, one, two, three. Six sentence structures, and you can really, really defeat task one, or, or like 98% of task ones you can defeat. The key is practice these structures, and once you get more confident with them, then you can start doing some different things like put two noun phrase fours in there or whatever. So let's do our task one for the day. This one, very difficult because of who did regular physical activity. This verb throws people out a lot. So let's take a quick look. How many numbers? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. As the most common amount of data, 12 data points. That means we're going to report all of them. We're going to say all of these numbers. We look at it. We make sure it's a static chart. So we're going to put our mind in a static chart frame of mind and not be using increase decrease we're going to be using compare to also notice we have age groups here please watch my age groups video so you know where to put the age groups a lot to think about and we look and we see this is percentage percentage of what percentage of men percentage of women you can say percentage of males or percentage of females it's fine right i don't want to focus too much on paraphrase and overview now because I really want to focus on these sentences that we're using. So I'll just do the paraphrase for you. Use a how much or how many. It's a nice way to paraphrase. So I just said that the bar chart indicates how many Australian men and women did regular physical activity in 2010. Now one thing I want to say about this is what can you paraphrase that to? You can paraphrase that to exercised and you should be able to do that. Exercise, it's like a band three word. You learn exercise in pre-intermediate. So let's look at our noun phrases. I often advise that you start with noun phrase three. It's often the easiest one to get. And actually, um, they've given you noun phrase three right there. Percentage of Australian men and women in different age groups who did regular physical activity. Notice where the age groups part goes. So we could change that to who exercised regularly. That's that's fine. That's good. You probably should do that. And then we can use both. Let me just make it a bit bigger. Now a lot of you had a couple of problems with finding noun phrase one and noun phrase two. It's men's exercise and exercise by men. It doesn't sound so good. Or a lot of you didn't use exercise and you tried to do something with uh, did and you had a problem. So let's forget about noun phrase one and two. And I'll show you that you can do this whole thing with noun phrase three and noun phrase four. So we've got these two possibilities over here. Then this will just be whatever, 25% of women 25% of women exercised regularly or did re regular exercise. Great. So let's look at our overview. Overall, it can be seen that. So then let's take a look. Now you're not going to do sort of arrows because it's not increasing or decreasing. You're basically going to look at what's higher, what's lower. Here, men is higher. But in all of the others, women is higher. So we want to say that it was higher for women than for men in all categories except for this category. It's a little bit different to this. It's because it's for the overview. But we're 
going to still use this sort of thing. This is still the main verb. But a little bit different to this because we're saying for all categories. So we're not going to say specific numbers in the overview. Let me show you. There we go. Noun phrase 3. I just used noun phrase 3 over there. Percentage of women who did regular physical activity. Was higher. Main verb. And then than men. That's where this one is a little bit different. For all age groups except the 15 to 24 age group. You need to be a bit flexible with your overviews because we never know what's going to happen with the overview. Right, now we can actually focus on what I'm trying to teach you for this video, which is using these sentences. So, some linking language. First, decide how you're going to do your paragraphs. I'm going to do th this one, this one, and this one, and I'm going to call them the younger age groups. And then this one, this one, this one, and call them the older age group. So I'm going to say, looking at the younger age groups in more detail, it can be seen that, or it is clear that. Please remember to take a, a few seconds to think about how you're going to organize your paragraphs. Right, then we're going to use one of our sentences. Finally, let's start with noun phrase four, because that's what I want to focus on today. So X percent of men exercised compared to Y percent of women. And what have we got? Let's start with this youngest one. 15 to 24 years old. 52.8, 47.7. So there's the noun phrase. 52% of men. There's the age group. It goes after the noun phrase. Then we want our main verb. Exercised regularly or did regular exercise. And then what do we have? Compared to something percent for women rather of women great so there we've got a very nice sentence using noun phrase four look at it again this one so you're going to put one of the categories in there and you're going to put the other category in there i didn't want to put too many x's and y's and men and women here because i don't want to confuse you but make sure you know how to make how to use this sentence right and then what's next in the 25 to 34 age group Maybe we can say something like however or in contrast because now it's different. And I'm going to use this one over here. Except this is going to say men, of course. So I'll put a however, noun phrase one, two, or three, was higher than for men. At that and that respectively. <clears throat> like that, right. However, linking language. Noun phrase... Three, all the way up until there. Please notice where the age group is. We're talking about women. Was higher than for men. At that and that respectively. Let me just check. 48.9, 42.2. 48.9, 42 42.2. Yes, great. So there we've used that. And it looks wonderful. Then another thing I want to show you with these statics is you start, your linking language includes the age group. So we will say in the 35 to 44 age group. Then we can do noun phrase 1, 2, or 3, but I want to do reference pronoun. And I'm going to use this one. But remember I said you can say compared to, you can say as opposed to, you can actually also just say and. Stood at X for men and Y for women. Let me just show you those three. Same structure compared to, as opposed to, and. Just gives you a bit of variation. So let's use this one. Stood at 50.5, 52.5 for women, 39.5 for men. But please, you always want to be looking out for a comma which. Now, with the dynamic, we said, comma, which was the highest point on the chart, comma, which was the lowest point on the chart. So we don't have points on the chart here. I wouldn't say which was the highest point on the chart. I think we should say which was the greatest difference on the chart. Because remember, a static is all about comparisons. So this one is the biggest difference in the chart. So comma, which gives you a nice complex sentence, which was the greatest difference on the chart. Or which was the greatest difference of all age groups. Sounds a bit better. Great. 
Let's move on. Turning to the older age groups, it can be seen that. And I'm just going to use this one again, but I think I'm going to throw a nice noun phrase 3 in there. The examiner will not notice you use the same sentence structure if you change your noun phrase to noun phrase 3, noun phrase 4, change your vocabulary compared to as opposed to. So there, what a beautiful sentence. The percentage of women in the 45 to 54 age group who did regular physical activity, noun phrase 1, uh, sorry, noun phrase 3 stood at that as opposed to that for men. Great. One more thing I can just change a bit here is that we can just say aged 45 to 54. That's another way of doing the age group just for a bit of variation. Great. Let's do another one. What shall we do? Let me do this one but I'm going to show you a slight variation where it's only this. We're only using this, but we're using two different NP4s. Let's do NP4A and NP4B. It, I don't want to make it too much like science. So it'll be 54% of men and 44% of women exercise regularly, full stop. So we're looking at this one, 53% of women, 45.1% of men. So we can introduce that as our linking language. Same as we did over there. I've changed age group to category. Very nice thing to do. Category is a lovely word. And then I've got noun phrase one, uh, noun phrase four for women, noun phrase four for men, exercise regularly. Great. Full stop. Whole different sentence structure, but it's actually the same. It looks different, but it's the same. And then I'm actually just going to do the same thing again. I just want to show you how flexible this this structure is some linking language let's say finally now it's actually it looks very complicated 45 percent one percent and 46 of men but i've put the age group inside here and then i've said in the same category it's still this structure, it's just that I've put the age groups in there and it makes it look completely different. You fool the examiner. Then here we can do the comma which. You should mark these comma which is which was the smallest difference on uh, of all the age groups. Comma which, very important. And there you go. Okay, that was a lot. I know you might need to um, look at that look at this video again because we've done noun phrase four we revised noun phrase three we looked we went over the sentence structures for dynamic charts and the sentence structures for static static charts and then we also played around with our new structures quite a lot so i know it was a lot uh, to see in one video but if you practice these you're not going to have a problem with many charts i can guarantee you great I put one uh, in the description for you for homework. Um, actually, I haven't done it yet myself. I just wanted you to get a bit more practice with the static. Tables are often static. They're just comparing two things. Here they're comparing boys aged 6 to 11 and boys aged 12 to 16. So have a go with that. Um, compare with your friends. Maybe I'll do a video on it later. I've got many videos to make. But... Try and use noun phrase 4, try and use these static uh, structures that we just learned. Great, thank you very much.